I'd say Arya, but Bran knows what's west of Westeros. So about a month ago, I made a video talking about what I thought were the worst endings for characters in season eight of Game of Thrones. Then I asked my lovely patrons on Patreon and I did a live chat about it. Well, this video, I wanna do the opposite. I wanna talk about 10 characters that I think had the best ending in the final season of Game of Thrones. Then of course, after this video, I'm gonna do a live chat and I am going to talk about what my patrons on Patreon thought and you guys can insert your own bits and pieces and thoughts. Anyways, let's start with the list. I'm not gonna count backwards because I, I don't like counting backwards. So, number one, Drogon made it out alive at the end of the final season and he was pretty lucky considering his mom forgot about the silliest things. I think we all need to acknowledge that Drogon was 100% right in GTFOing, one, out of Westeros and going to Essos, but two, it's amazing that he made it out of this show alive. Jorogon, you made out like a bandit and you took a, a tasty little snack with you. So good on you, buddy. Number two, Jon Snow. Okay, think about this. This dude stabbed his aunt, then stabbed his aunt, and then got to live with his bros beyond the wall, hanging out with Tormon, which is like the best bro you can ever have, and his pet direwolf. Do you know how many wildling bitches he's probably fucking beyond the wall? And if I were to make a guess, and you know, I'm allowed to because this is my channel, I can within reason do whatever I want. But anyways, I'm assuming in like a hundred years, there's like multiple tribes of free folk that can trace their ancestry to, to Jon Snow because he's just going to get up there and just... Number three, Tyrion. I don't know how this guy got out so lucky in the final season of Game of Thrones. I mean, he became very stupid. He was a very clever character, and, and then he got to Essos, and then all of a sudden he just went to dick and ball jokes, I, I guess. I don't know. He did a lot of shenanigans, made a lot of mistakes, and the fact that he's Hand of the King and in control of the Westerlands can basically marry anyone he wants within reason. Tyrion made out pretty sweet. Kind of makes me wish I had older twin siblings that were blanking. Maybe my life would have turned out as well. Number four, Bran. This is the type of dude that does none of the work, but then gets the A. It, it, it's just unbelievable. Bran had one of the sweetest endings. Okay, yeah, he's crippled, but you know he's still going and using the werewood.net and watching lots of weird porn and probably his sister having sex on her wedding night. King of the Six Kingdoms has all these people doing what he bids. Yeah, Bran had a really good ending for I think what he actually should have gotten. Number five, Bronn. Speaking of someone that got a lot that he probably didn't deserve, come on. Warden of the Reach? And I'm really shocked there's no one in the Reach that was like, okay, we were kind of PO'd when the Tyrells took over because there was more noble, long-reaching uh, Reach blood. Haha. <laughs> uh, here, uh, we're pretty PO'd about the Tyrells. Bronn coming in? I don't know. I, I feel like there's going to be some issues in the Reach happening pretty soon, but that's not important. What's important is Bronn ends up controlling the Reach, is <laughs> the Lord of the Reach, and is also the master of coin. As stupid as him getting all those titles is, he still made it out pretty sweet by the end of the season, so. Bronn, you're on my list, even though D&D made it the Bronn show <sighs> in quite a few seasons. Number six, Sam. Not only does he get to keep uh, being with his hottie, wildling honey, and having a kid with her and possibly more kids, but he gets to live out his dream of being a maester. I mean, considering the amount of hardship Sam went through in his life before the books and then throughout the books, <laughs> Sam, you got like everything you wanted. Number seven, Sansa. She's just the worst. 
Next time, maybe when you are given a secret that your father was able to keep for, you know, almost two decades, maybe try to keep it for more than 30 seconds. But given everything, I mean, yeah, she did experience a lot of trauma and horrible things, but still, at the end of the final season, she's the Queen of the North. Or Queen in the North. It, it, you say Queen of the North saying like, oh, it's kind of like you're just the Queen of the North. And then people go, it's the Queen in the North. No, bitch, it's both. You can say it either way. You need to calm down. You're being too loud. Anyways, Sansa is a total skank and uh, betrayed her family. Number eight, Davos. Look, this dude went from being a smuggler and being born in Flea Bottom to getting a bunch of titles, becoming a lord, serving a couple different kings, and now has a prestigious role, title, job, whatever, on the small council. Master of Ships. That dude went pretty far pretty quickly. And his ending, I mean, as long as he can find his other kids, we don't seem to ever hear him talk about or care about. Davos had a pretty good ending. He's gonna live pretty comfortably for the, the rest of his life. You know, until the Civil War happens. Number nine, Gendry. Look, we all know what it's like to be pumped and dumped. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Anyways, Gendry, you went from being a, a bastard in Flea Bottom to being the Lord of the Stormlands. You are in charge of the Stormlands. You can get anybody you want within reason in your bed. Dude, you had major social ladder movement. So Gendry, I know your heart is wounded right now because of that, that rogue Arya, but you're gonna be okay in the end. You basically are gonna be comfortable for the rest of your life, so. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Does that, does that work for what I'm saying right now? I don't know, I'm just gonna move on to number 10. Finally, number 10, Old Nan. I'm so happy that D&D, the showrunners for Game of Thrones, gave us an epilogue where they shared Old Nan lived for a couple more decades in Winterfell, scaring the shit out of children with her scary stories, and then, one night, well, well into the future, after the final season, she went to bed warm in her bed and gently passed away in her sleep. Truly beautiful to know that's how old Nan's life ended. Thank you, Dean Dee. Hey, what about that mysterious prince from Dorne? I'm sure he just went back to Dorne and decided, eh, screw it. We're just gonna do our own thing and probably just lived out his life in, in total luxury. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna ask my patrons on Patreon who they think had the best ending in the final season of Game of Thrones, and then I'm going to do a live chat about it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and... Whew. I don't know, watch, watch a sunset. Just put your phone down, put your computer away, watch the sunset, and just marvel in its beauty.